All right, now for those of you that don't know, we have a Rottweiler named Otis. And Otis, of course, is a big baby, but for the most part, he's a good dog. Of course he's a good dog, because he's mama's little baby. That's right, I'm mama's little baby, but I'm still mean. I'm a big, bad, mean dog. Bark, bark. Well, with that being said, Otis does have a few bad habits that he needs to get rid of. Like, for one, he likes to sit around the house like this, which, uh, honestly makes me uncomfortable. I don't know why. Maybe it's because his dick's touching the carpet? I mean, who the hell wants dog dick touching the carpet, for Christ's sake? Like I said, Otis is a big baby, but he still likes to pretend that he's mean and scary. But his ass is about as intimidating as a goddamn Teletubby. Hell, I watched him bark at a basketball for like 20 minutes straight one time, and that basketball couldn't give two shits. Not to mention, Otis needs constant attention, or else he'll throw a fit like some kind of moon teenager. Nobody rubbed my belly this morning, so I tore up this stuffed animal, and then I humped whatever was left of it. But out of all of Otis's bad habits, I'd have to say that the most annoying one is when he brings in shit from the outside. Pah. Hey, I found this giant tree branch outside, and now it's my new best friend. And he brings in all sorts of crazy shit from outside. We're talking branches, rocks, some kid's fucking big wheel, he doesn't give a damn. I don't know what the hell this thing is, but I love it, and it's my new best friend. Well, imagine our surprise when one morning, Otis's ass comes inside the house, covered in blood, and then he spits out a fucking bone on the living room floor. Ah, oh, sick, what the hell? Hey, I made another new best friend. It's this dead thing outside that I've been rolling around in. So naturally, I start freaking out, thinking there's a fucking dead body in our backyard. So I go outside and inspect the fucking crime scene, and lo and behold, there's a goddamn blood trail that leads to the bottom of our deck. So now I have to scurry my ass under there with a flashlight, looking like a fucking goonie searching for Chester Copperpot and shit. Thankfully, it wasn't a human corpse that I found. Instead, it was a, uh, well, it was a fucking animal corpse of some sort. I don't know if it was a raccoon or a possum or a fucking ocelot. I don't know what the hell it was, but it was dead as hell, I can tell you that. So naturally, I fling the corpse out into the fucking woods with a shovel, and that's the end of the story. Or at least, that's what I thought was the end of it, Till a few days later, when Otis's ass waltzes back into the living room, covered in blood again. Hey, everybody, I got a bunch of red on me. Oh, no, not again. God damn it, Otis, stop desecrating animal corpses. But upon further inspection, we realize that he's not covered in the blood of a raccoon slash possum slash ocelot. It's Otis's own blood. Oh my god, Mama's little baby's bleeding! Wait, what? That's Otis's blood? Yeah, and I can't tell where it's coming from! He's got so much fur! There's too much fur! God damn it! Go to the bathroom and get the razor! We have to shave the dog! So I run to the bathroom, and instead of shaving the dog like some kind of psychopath, I grab a towel. And with that towel, I wrap Otis up like a fucking taquito, and I haul him out to the car so we can take him to the vet. Now it's important to note, we still have no idea what the hell happened to Otis. Did some kid hit him with a fucking dirt bike? Was he attacked by a posse of coyotes? Maybe he's the victim of a cruel prank at prom in a Stephen King novel. Who the hell knows? So now my wife's driving through the neighborhood like a fucking six-year-old playing Grand Theft Auto. Meanwhile, I'm in the back seat looking like a goddamn reservoir dog scene. We finally get to the emergency vet, and at first we have no idea what the hell to even tell the receptionist. Uh, yeah, we don't know if, like, our dog tripped and fell or if he got shot by a rifle, but he's bleeding all over the place. Uh, okay, is that why you wrapped him up like a goddamn gordita? See, we should have shaved him. I fucking told you we should have shaved the dog. So they take Otis in the back to see what the hell's going on with him. Meanwhile, we sit down in the waiting room with all the other neglectful pet owners. Hey, what brings you guys in today? Uh, we don't really know exactly. Oh, that's cool. I'm here because I knocked a can of beer into my fish tank, and now my pet turtle's all fucked up. Oh, okay, uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. So like an hour and a half goes by, and all of a sudden, Otis comes tap dancing out like nothing ever happened. I got a boo-boo on my paw, but they made it all better, and I'm still a scary, scary boy. Bark, bark, bark. Oh my god, is Mama's little baby okay? Oh yeah, he's alright. He just broke a nail on his left paw. Wait, what? All that blood and he just broke a goddamn nail? Yeah, sometimes they bleed quite a bit, but he's okay. Oh, and sir, your drunk ass turtle's fine. He just needs to sleep it off. Get your hands off me, lady. I'm not sleeping shit off. Come on, let's go to Taco Bell. So all in all, let me summarize what the hell happened that day. First, we hauled a 120 pound Rottweiler burrito into the car. Then we committed 14 moving violations to get him to the vet. And finally, we paid that vet at $600, also Otis could get a fucking manicure. But in the end, we were just happy that Otis was okay, and he was back to his non-intimidating self in no time. Granted, he was missing a front claw for a while, which his temperamental ass was very self-conscious about. Are you guys looking at my missing claw? Stop it or else I'm gonna go rip up a roll of toilet paper and then hump whatever's left of it. BrewStew.com